the giant and the shoemaker. Once there was a shoemaker who earned his living by traveling from one village to the next, mending shoes. The villagers always paid him for his service. However, if they hadn't enough money, they would give him some cottage cheese or a basket of fruit. Sometimes a small animal or even a bird. And every morning he would make his way to the village with a bag full of tools and a small pouch of food. And in order to get to the village faster, the shoemaker would often cut across the woods. The villagers used to avoid the woods because they believed there lived the giant ogre who devoured humans. These village rulers did not really bother the shoemaker and he kept using the woods in order to reach his various destinations. But one evening, as the shoemaker was on his way back home, he came face to face with the evil giant. Hey, you! Yes, you human! exclaimed the giant. Oh, how do you do, my friend? answered the shoemaker politely. Uh, uh, well, what are you capable of doing? asked the giant. Well, um, I'm capable of doing all that you can do, answered the shoemaker confidently and without the slightest fear. <laughs> the, the ogre could not suppress his laughter when he heard this puny shoemaker declare that he was as strong as a giant. We'll see about that, challenged the giant. Look, are you capable of doing this? The giant picked up a stone from the ground and crushed it to powder with his fist. That's easy, smiled the shoemaker. And without letting the giant notice, he reached into his pouch and snatched a piece of cottage cheese. Then he bent to the ground, pretending to pick up a stone. Watch this. And he squashed the soft cheese until drops of water trickled down his fist. The giant was ever so astonished because although he was very strong, he was not so smart. Dear me, thought the giant, I have never seen anyone draw water out of a stern. But he did not give up, for he could not accept such a defeat. Okay, now let us see if you can throw a stern as far as I can, boasted the giant. And he picked up another stone from the ground and flung it so hard that it reached the trees at the very, very far end of the woods. <laughs> oh, I can do better than that, smiled the shoemaker. And once again, he reached deep inside his pouch where earlier on he had placed a small bird given to him by one of the villagers. He pretended to pick up another stone from the ground and tossed the bird into the air. The bird was finally set free and he flew far, far away until he disappeared into the sky. The defeated giant gave up and without uttering another word, went back home sulking. And when the giant related the whole story to his mummy, she was very suspicious of the shoemaker. Beware the human, she warned him. Because he is smart, and if you're not careful, he will destroy you. But the giant did not pay any attention to his mother's warning, and the next day he set out looking for the shoemaker again. Hey! Hey, you human! greeted the giant as he spotted the shoemaker. I can uproot an entire tree with my bare hands. And so the giant clasped his arms around a tree trunk and pulled it out of the ground, exposing its roots. The shoemaker did not appear surprised. So he took out a rope from his basket and started tying up all the trees. What are you doing? exclaimed the giant, utterly confused. Well, I'm going to pull down all the trees in the woods, answered the shoemaker. No, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Leave everything as is, yelled the giant. Because if you do that, I won't have anywhere to live. 
And once again, the giant was defeated and had to go back home sulking. And every time his mummy would warn him, beware the human, because he is smart and he will destroy you. At long last, the giant decided to get rid of the shoemaker before it was too late. So the next time they met him, the giant asked him, Hey, you human, where do you live? Oh, I'll show you, answered the shoemaker. And after a good walk along the meadow, the shoemaker showed him a small cottage. Here's where I live, explained the shoemaker. The giant took one good look and off he went. That evening, the shoemaker climbed up the tree next to his cottage and hid in its branches. But at midnight, he saw the giant approaching, carrying a huge boulder. The giant lifted the boulder and dropped it down heavily, crashing the cottage beneath it. <laughs> Satisfied, the giant ogre went back home. But the next day, the giant came face to face with the shoemaker. How can this be? exclaimed the giant. Didn't you feel anything last night? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, to tell you the truth, I did feel something, the shoemaker said. Probably a little plaster came off the ceiling and fell on my face while I was asleep. Yeah. The giant was very puzzled and lost for words. He could not accept the fact that this tiny human being was stronger than him. Okay, do you see that rock? said the giant, showing him a huge boulder. Are you? Hmm? Are you capable of lifting it on your shoulder? I can do better than that, <laughs> laughed the shoemaker. And all of a sudden, the shoemaker shot to the edge of the cliffs and started yelling. All you villagers, get out of your homes, please. Leave your houses at once. Dear me, dear me, whatever are you going to do? asked the giant, totally confused. Well, you see, I'm going to lift up that mountain there and drop it on that village there. No, 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 don't you dare, yelled the giant, because he concluded that if the shoemaker demolished the whole village, he would not have any more humans to devour. And on the thought of food, he came up with an idea. Very well, said the giant. You might have defeated me in strength, but you will never beat me in food, for I can surely eat more than you can. Hmm. Then let's have lunch together and we'll see, answered the shoemaker. So, um, tell me, what would you like to eat? Uh, uh, a ravioli, said the giant. Very well. Tomorrow we shall have a meal of ravioli, said the shoemaker. The next day, the giant showed up with two large cauldrons and two sacks full of ravioli. They lit a fire and began to cook the ravioli. But the shoemaker had a plan, you see. He prepared a leather pouch and secured it around his belly, well hidden beneath his shirt. And at noon, the food was ready and they began to eat. The giant gobbled the ravioli by the dozen. With every twelve ravioli the giant ate, the shoemaker would only eat one and sneak the rest into his pouch. <coughs> and at last, they ate it all. <laughs> I ate more than you, stated the giant, who was completely stuffed with ravioli. Oh, get over yourself, protested the shoemaker. Didn't you see how much I ate? No, 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 no. I ate more ravioli than you, yelled the giant. Well, very well, very well, answered the shoemaker. Then uh, let us count them. Count them, frowned the giant. How can we count the ravioli if they're inside our belly? Of course we can, said the shoemaker. It's easy, 
look. And with a sharp knife, he sliced open the leather pouch. And all the ravioli spilled to the ground. The giant wanted to show off too. And he snatched the knife from the shoemaker and plunged it with all his might into his belly. The giant ogre fell down dead. And never more did he devour either ravioli or humans again.